Hey everybody, this is Jason, Colorado Mountain Man Survival and Survival University. I flew out here to Georgia to learn about tanning deer hides. Stick with me and I'll tell you a little bit about my experience. So I'm out here with Mel in the mountains, Melanie. She's over here at her cabin and we'll go talk to her in a little bit to tell you about the process and see uh, why she got into doing this. But uh, tanning deer hides is something that I've always wanted to learn. Um, I've tried it, never really been good at it. Um, read a bunch of books, watched some videos online, and it's just something that uh, I just couldn't quite figure out. Again, I really wanted to learn about it, so I decided to find somebody that was good at it that I could go take the class with. Um, there's a lot to the process. It's not a quick, simple thing. Um, before we even got here, Melanie, Mel, uh, she had to start the process of soaking the hides and, and getting them ready for us to flesh and grain and get all the hair and the, the nasty bits off so that we could turn it into a nice soft material like this. This is a deer hide. Um, this, I think, came off of a young doe, but uh, pretty cool what you can do with something like this. Um, this was a rigid, um, thick, hairy hide, and now we can turn it into something that's soft and comfortable to wear. Um, a lot of people might think, well, why do I want to wear a deer hide? Why do I want to learn this skill? Well, there's a lot that you can do with it. You know, you can make clothing out of this. You can make cordage out of this. You can make rope out of this. You can make bags. There's, you know, the, your, your imagination is the limit. Any type of material, you know, what would you make? Um, use material for to make something if you're going to make something but outside of that there's a lot more to the the value of this deer hide um, first of all you know we're we're society is changing things are changing with, with the covid and things like that people are finding themselves getting out into the woods more or they're not around people as much and they're looking for something to do with their their time their valuable time to keep themselves occupied Making something this will like this will obviously keep you occupied. This this process probably takes you know anywhere between you know five to fourteen days to make something like this. It's not quick. Um, while you're doing it, um, you're working muscles you don't realize you ever had. This is a very uh, str body strengthening process. You're going to be you know, fine movements. You're going to strengthen your hands. You're going to strengthen your shoulders, your muscles. It's great exercise, I tell you. Um, that's why I'm such in good shape is because I'm out here in the woods and I'm doing stuff like this and I'm moving around. Um, and it's I don't go to the gym, but it, it's really good for my body. It's good for my mind. Also, I'm learning new skills. I'm coming out here. You know, this stuff. It's it's sharpening my mind. It's making me more aware of uh, materials and the value of something. You know, typically we're, we're a throwaway society. Um, we might go and process an animal. We go to the store and we get the meat. That's all we get is the meat. We'll eat that meat. Well, what about the rest of the animal? What happens to the rest of that animal? Um, a lot of times if it, that stuff just gets thrown away, the cow hide, the deer hide, the bones, all that is discarded for the most part. Um, or ground up into something that the, the do our dogs eat. But these are valuable tools. These are valuable things that we can use in our everyday life, especially if you're gonna start primitive living or getting away from society, tiny homes and everything like that. If you're wanting to get outside and become more self-reliant, learning these skills will help with that. You know, now, now I know how to use the skin of a deer or an elk or a, you know, a bear or a bobcat or a mountain lion, a raccoon, squirrel, a rat, all that stuff, all those materials can make, be made into something. So learning how to tan hides is a valuable skill. It's a tradable skill. There's people, there's a commodity for this. So, you know, you're looking for a little extra money. You know, you're not, you're not quite making ends meet on your, your bills or something like that. And you wanna learn a fun hobby that you can make some extra cash. These things are not cheap. They sell for a lot of a lot of money. Um, so you can make extra money by making just raw hide or tanned hide or making clothing or bags or moccasins or whatever it is. So this is a very valuable skill to learn. 
there's so many valuable skills you can learn from coming out and learning um, primitive ways or natural ways to do this. So, you know, that's a quick, quick, real quick run through of what you could do with this type of material or, you know, learning these type of skills. But we're, we're gonna go talk to Mel here in a little bit. Um, unfortunately, this is a very labor intensive process. You really can't stop once you get going. Uh, there are stages and we'll talk about that. There are stages you can pause, but you know, we didn't have time to pause during this process. We'll be able to talk to Mel here in a minute and she'll be able to explain the process um, to you a little bit. Maybe it'll interest you though. You're not going to get good at this until you start doing it. Anyways, let's go over here and talk to Mel at her little cabin out here in the woods. Hey everybody, Jason again. I'm out here with Melanie. Mel on the mountains. You see the sign back there. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> Mel on the mountains. Yeah. This has got to be weird. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we just finished up our hide tanning class, deer hide brain tanning. Yes. Yeah. So um, we're going to go over the process real quick, uh, real fast on how we made these. But uh, Mel, uh, what got you into doing this? I just uh, went to a bushcraft event for the first time maybe three or four years ago and was very green to the whole thing and just got a little bit of taste of everything and then we like learned how to dispatch a rabbit and skin it and then that just got me interested in what you can do with the hide and how it's like some people look at it as just a throwaway trash or whatever but I'm like you can make clothing out of that and I really love the fact that it's not wasting and you can do your own clothing and be self-reliant and not have to depend on having a Walmart to go to, you know. Right. And this stuff lasts longer than anything you buy in a store. And it's like nature's clothing. And I just love that. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, really, it doesn't take long for you to establish a skill as long as you practice it. I mean, yeah. how many how many hides would you say you've tanned? I have probably after... tanned 40 hides um, in the last two years. And I probably have scraped another 20 to 30 so they're waiting to be tanned but um yeah so we kind of do it in stages because it does take so long and it kind of wears on your body after a while <laughs> right <you> know. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah she know. beat me up today it was it's <laughs> yeah. a process and we'll talk about this process yeah. here in a minute but it, it is definitely uh it'll show you all the muscles that you didn't know that you had uh mm -hmm. hand strength if you're into rock climbing yes rock climbers you got nothing on hide tanners come take my <laughs> yeah, class that's it's a great. challenge <laughs> yeah come check it out um yeah. so from the time that we you know you somebody processes a deer and skins it yeah. um what what is the first step so the first step is getting the flesh off of the hide okay um because if you leave it on it's gonna like deteriorate and rot a lot faster so you want to flesh it um, and then you're going to either buck it by putting it in a lye solution. How long does it sit in that lye that solution? usually, depending on the temperature outside um, and all of our weather, anywhere from three days to like two weeks. Mine typically, they, they will be bucked in like three to seven days. Okay. Um, so what does that bucking do? So buck, the bucking the hides, it makes the, um, the grain, which is what holds the hair to the skin, it makes it swell up and it's easier for you to get your... Um, scraping blade under it and be able to push the grain and the hair off of it um, so after you've bucked it you scrape all the hair and grain off of it and then you'll flip it on the other side which is where the flesh used to be and you'll um, scrape the membrane off of it then and once you get that done um, you soak it in water in a creek to let it neutralize and get all the lye solution out of it right and then you're ready to start the braining process so yeah, so I read about uh, the, the grain side and the membrane side. It's, it's in all sorts of books. And, and you can read it and you can see pictures, yep. hand drawings of it. But being able to see it, feel it, experience it in a class like this yeah. is vastly different. Um, watching videos, you just can't. It's a feel almost. Uh, just yeah. like anything else that we do out here in the, in the woods. You, you have to feel it and experience it to know what the the hell somebody's talking about yeah. and you just can't <laughs> honestly it's hard to to, to uh, read about it in a book is which is why i came out and took this class sorry i keep interrupting you no, so okay. so after <laughs> after uh graining it and membraning it um what do we do next so um after you do that and you neutralize it and get all the lye solution out of it we wring it out um, to get as much water out as we can so that when we do put it in the brain solution it is like a sponge and it's going to soak it up and that's what you want. You want the brain solution to, um, to get into the hide. 
and then after you soak it in the brain solution and massage it um, for a bit, you know, anywhere from 15 minutes to two hours, you can leave it in overnight, it's fine. Then we want to wring it out again, and that's gonna help push the brain solution through the fibers right. of the deer hide. Um, and so we'll do that for, it depends on how many, you might need anywhere from two to five to seven brainings, depending on if it's a buck hide or, you know, the doe hides take less brainings. What is, what is the braining solution for? I mean, why, why put it in the brain? So the deer hides have natural glues in them and we want to remove those glues and replace them with the brain uh, solution. So the brain has lecithin in it, which is the same thing that egg yolks have. So you can also use egg yolks to, to tan hides. Um, and there's various other things you can use too, but those are the two main ones that people um, tan hides with. So we want that to get into the fibers and attach to it. So it helps the fibers stay flexible. Right. And then after the end, we smoke it and that preserves it all from going back to a raw hide state. But so, so egg yolks and brains yeah. Um, rubbing in, you you uh, add them with warm water. Yeah. That helps. It's the beginning process, basically, of starting right. to soften up yes. the hides. Yes. So without it, you're going to have a crunchy potato chip. Yeah. And I don't know about you, about <laughs> wearing a crunchy potato chip, but I don't that think it'll be very, very comfortable. Very abrasive. <laughs> like, like, people can be abrasive, so can raw hide. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it, it's a process. Um, but um, after we, we brain it, we soak it in the braining yeah. solution. What's next? So... You wring the brain solution out, um, and then you're going to do a softening process, which there's various techniques that we use to soften. Um, so one of them is we'll put it over our knees and we'll stretch it to open it. Um, we also have a hide stake, which is like the first thing that you do once you finish wringing it, because you want to open the hide up enough to be able to do all these other stretching and iterations of it. Um, so we, we try to keep the fibers moving at that point. Yeah, so you open it up on the hide stake. And then you can um, also do the stretching over your legs, which is my favorite one because it feels like you're getting a thigh workout. Um, and then we have a cable that we will use and um, that will also help stretch it, which we can show you in a minute if you want. Um, and let's see, what else are we doing? Oh, we like to take the hide and you like twist it around and then you smack it on the table. And we call that spanking the baby. <laughs> 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 and it also is a really good uh, therapeutic activity because it, if you have any aggression build up, you just release it when you're smacking the hide all over the table. <laughs> um, let's see. Basically what you're doing with all these different processes, you know, using the cable and stretching on your legs or stretching it with your hands or using the cable. I think I mentioned that already. You are breaking down the fibers and the glue that are in that hide and making it from a potato chip <laughs> into ni something nice and soft and pliable yeah. um, it, and it takes a lot of work so we're from the time that we start uh, we put it in the um, the water we start scraping the hair off until the time when you can actually uh, call it a soft product a soft uh, cloth if you will yeah. you're looking at least three days yes. you know three Good to four point. days so um that doesn't include the the weeks or the several days ahead of time of it soaking in that solution yeah. but let's go um after you stretched it and broken down the fibers you have to let it dry out right and right. then and during that process as it's drying you got to make sure that you've worked it enough what yeah. do you need what do you want to add to that well because you have to keep it moving or else when the fibers dry they'll they'll dry crunchy and like my best analogy of it is if you take a string, a piece of cotton string, and you have it dipped in glue, and you string it out on a table and you just let it dry, it's going to dry crunchy. But if you keep working that string as the glue is drying, when the glue is dry, it'll still be flexible. And that is basically the same as what we're doing with these hides. So. Right. Yeah, and you can tell as you're working it, if it starts drying and it yeah. feels weird, you know that you're you're probably going to have to put it back in that braining solution again yeah. and soften them all back up. You don't want to have to do that. No. So you keep <laughs> working it until it's completely dry. Yeah. I mean, you can tell um, when it's not dry. Yeah. How? It's cool to the touch, for one thing. Um, if there's a lot of moisture in it, it's we call it a blue spot because it's mm -hmm. you know it's a different color than the rest of the hide. Um, but the main way that we know that we can tell if it's finished is if when you grab it and crunch it, and you let it go, and it just kind of goes back to its natural shape. But if it holds the shape of you crunching it, it's still got moisture in, it and you still got to keep working it. 
Right. So it's all about feel, yeah. and you're not going to get that feel from a book. I highly recommend you come out and take a class like this, yeah. you know, from Mel or anybody else that's in your neck in the woods. But, you know, <laughs> come out. Mel would be happy if you come out there, um, out here for this. Um, we're going to try to get her to Colorado. Um, another thing that you gain from out here, other than I talked about earlier about, uh, you know, strengthening muscles and, and <laughs> getting the outdoor experience and having a tradable skill you also build some camaraderie because we, oh, yeah. we sit around the campfire <laughs> right here half the time and you're sitting around uh, stretching these hinds and you get to meet people from all over the country. You know, I get people from all over the place to come in for these classes. Uh, you know, I've had people all over the United States, all over the world. So you can meet some interesting people Definitely. from all different backgrounds. You know, I get, you know, people that live in the woods all the way up to doctors and lawyers and everything else is pretty cool the type of rocket scientists i've yeah. had rocket scientists out here doing this kind of stuff it's great but anyways yeah. enough of that let's show real quick some of what we're working with so this what are we looking at here so this is a deer hide that has been fleshed already um and then we just strung it out and dried it so you can see it's it's pretty rigid. I mean, it yeah. folds a little bit, but that's that you can hear it cracking and popping. So that's a nice rigid hair on deer hide. Yep. Um, what we would do is we moisten that up after you've, well, you soak it in that that solution. Right. Um, yeah. And then it becomes pliable, and then you're going to scrape all the hair off. Yep. With this tool, and there is a wrong way and a right way to do it, and you don't, yes. you've already spent a lot of time on this, you don't want to do it the wrong way, and we're not going to really go into that. But <laughs> once we, once we scrape that off, then you get it's still wet, and we get, do we have anything else? Another um, stage along the way out here, we not don't really. Have that one. Um, yeah. but the next thing, kind of, well, I guess this after you've worked it, yeah, this and and it's dried out, you turn that into this <laughs> and this isn't this not a completed process yet so what is what are we looking at here so this is a brain tanned softened hide it's, it's finished with that process and all it needs now is to be smoked um but this is like not so colorado smoke no not that Stop kind of <laughs> <man>. <laughs> although that might work it'd be a different aroma to it but yeah right um this is amazingly soft like i wish you could feel it through the camera but you can't um, this feels so wonderful and luxurious against your skin. I just, I wish everybody could feel it against their skin. Um, and we smoke it and then it becomes this beautiful golden, uh, color and it smells wonderful. If you like campfire smell, you're going to you love it. You smell it there. You yeah, go. there you go. <laughs> so by smoking it, we mean just that you, you start a fire, um, out here we put it in, uh, basically charcoal. Um, in a bucket, not not like charcoal briquettes that you nope. buy, um, but natural wood, hardwood charcoal. And you don't let them catch on fire where they're bursting into flames. You have to make sure they don't uh, burn so much. Maybe throw water over them a little bit, spray water over them. And, but you trap that smoke. The smoke rolls up off of those charcoals. We put punk wood on yeah, top and of it. Right, there's punk yeah. wood on top of it. it you're just trying to generate a huge amount of smoke from these embers yeah. that passes across this yeah. hide um you we made bags basically you yeah. take two you of these two. together you glue two of those together yeah. and make a bag and the uh the uh, <laughs> something just attacked me i think a squirrel <laughs> just attacked me i don't know he's firing at you anyways the smoke pours through or gets in case basically sort of like a hot air balloon but instead of yeah. hot air it's it's smoke and yep. it changes the color from this to this and why do we smoke it so we smoke it to preserve it um uh so if this gets wet it'll get harder again if you didn't smoke it like if this one right here that has not been smoked gets wet it's gonna go back to like a rawhide state like kind of the crunchy potato state mm -hmm, potato um so smoking it allows it to be be stay soft after it dries. Um, you might have to like abrade it a little bit just to get it back to just a softness once you've washed it. Um, but it also is the, the smoke helps keep you know critters from wanting it and bugs from getting into it because they don't want to eat smoky stuff. So right. that's the main reason that we do it, and it also gives it this beautiful color, um, which you can do variations of the punky wood to give it a different color. 
Um, some will do it lighter, some will do it darker, and then smoking it longer and longer makes it a darker color. You know, as well. did, did smoking waterproofs it too. Did you say? Doesn't it? Does it add? It a, does not waterproof it. Does not waterproof no. it. Okay, it, it I've heard that it, it has. Yeah, no. but yeah, it, but it does kill bacteria. Any bacteria yeah. that are in there, so yeah, smoke is good. That's why we take out here in woods. We take smoke baths. That's right. Um, That's right. Because it kills the funk. Yeah. Hopefully, <laughs> that's on us. But it also kills the funk that are in hides to some extent. Yeah, it does. It it, it keep, keeps the bacteria down, and so you don't have to wash these very often, not like you would everyday clothing, um, because of the the smokiness helps keep, keep the even body bacteria down. So how would you wash these? Um, just in water usually is good enough. If you need to use soap, if you get it like super dirty, I would just use something like Dove or Dawn. Mm -hmm. um, the less amount of chemicals, the better, you know. Um, just wash it out and wring it out really good and then lay it flat to dry. You don't want to hang it because it will misshape the, the natural um, shape of, of the deer hide or the garment that you've made. And right. You don't want to waste time making garments and sewing and all that and uh, have it misshapen. Yeah, you don't want it, a week's worth of work. You don't want it yeah, to no. uh, do that. So you got a, some of a finished product here. You want to show them what yeah, you got? this was... Um, I used my very first hide that I made in the first class that I took and I made this wrap skirt. Um, this is like two and a half hides that I've used to make this. Um, so it's just a simple wrap skirt. Um, you can do it in various different directions if you want the long part, you know, on the side or the back or whatever. But um, yeah, so that's like the easiest thing that I would suggest to start on. Um, so I'm working on like a tank top now and that's a little more Things that are more form-fitted are a lot harder to do if you're not used to sewing garments, right. which I am not, so I'm learning <laughs> as I go. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, and I, this was the first time I had made um, buckskin thong, which is basically the thread that you can use if you're not going to use like sinew. So I made, I cut like one long strand from um, another hide and you just use that to sew um, with the holes and I'll take an awl and poke the hole through it. And that's how I use it to, uh, to thread the thong through there. That's pretty cool. So yeah. you can make skirts, you can make jackets, <laughs> you can make pants, you can make hats, anything you can think of clothing-wise. Teepees, clothing -wise, teepees yeah. um, beds, blankets, whatever. Chairs, yeah, there's drums. Your imagination is the <laughs> limit. Pretty cool stuff, and it's durable, and it's it's a tradable skill, yep. a tradable pot product. I know a lot of people these days are looking for, you mentioned earlier, side jobs or things that they can use as a skill to... Uh, make themselves more valuable for whatever reason. Uh, this is one of them, and, and um, I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. Moccasins, moccasins are huge. Uh, hunters enjoy moccasins, and so many different things. But uh, oh, you got anything you want to add? Um, just that I would love to teach other people this, so that you can appreciate, you know, some of the gifts from nature and and have another skill that's not, you know. Not so many people have it, and I don't want it to be a dying skill, you know. I think right. it's an important skill to learn. Yeah, and we have a lot of dying skills. Um, yeah. People like us try to are trying to inter reintroduce them. These aren't anything new. Yeah. Um, our ancestors did it. We're not weird. Well, we might <laughs> well, be maybe weird, a little but... weird, but, but <laughs> it's things that our ancestors have passed down yeah. to us that we have forgotten over the past 100, 200 years because of technology and manufacturing and everything easy but yeah come out here and if you're not going to take a class from me or her find somebody in your neck of the woods that do, does something like this and just come out and learn a skill and have fun yeah um very enjoyable experience i mean you don't get to come out a lot of people don't get right. to come out often and play in the woods and now you have a purpose that's right and something you can walk away with yeah and you do take a class like this you take these hides home. If yes. you're taking a class that you don't get to keep the hide, don't take that class. Don't take that class. <laughs> right. Yeah. Anyways, and thanks. Get, out, for, get outdoors. Yes. Please get outdoors somehow. Get outdoors away from the TV. Definitely. <laughs> get your kids out here too. Yes. Um, okay. Anyways, thanks for joining us. Uh, hopefully you. you learned something. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.